Foremost Islamic human rights group, Muslim Rights Concern, urges mil Muslim aspirants vying for the position of the president of the 10th Senate to withdraw from the race in order to allow for a Southern Christian. And federal government threatens to replace striking doctors with ad hoc staff. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anacone. The Muslim Rights Concern Group has urged Muslim aspirants vying for the position of the President of the 10th Senate to withdraw from the race in order to allow for a Saudi Christian. The Executive Director, Murik Professor Ishak Akintala, said um, in a statement on Thursday, Marik noted that it wants the Senate presidency to go to a Christian from the South because Nigeria needs the cooperation of both Muslims and Christians for collaboration to engender peace and development. The group therefore called on Muslims vying for the post to withdraw from the Senate presidential race. Joining us to discuss this is Professor Ishak Akintala. He's the director, Murik. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us and good evening. You are my forward. All right. Thank, well, thank you for joining us. Um, let, let's. Well, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Um, but I, 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 I want to ask. You know that, of course, the the leadership race for the National Assembly has been thrown open, even though um, the party, the ruling party, the APC, has somewhat. Um, thrown its weight behind certain people they think they would prefer as leaders um, in the National Assembly. But uh, as of um, to some days ago, um, Mr. Yari had said that the formula of zoning in the National Assembly was unfair, and that's because he's also in the running. What are your thoughts? Can you yes, hear me? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I... I so you're concerning our statement of concerning our statement. Oh my god. Can you well concerning our statement of the business of we believe that um uh, it is only fair and just to spread the uh the offices and positions, particularly key posts, political posts, or they have the best. The Muslim Muslim head has won the president. So the president is uh, a vote, he advises the vote. The start for the key for the people. Is the uh, Senate president, and it should not go to Muslim because actually, what people think have been advocating uh, right from the beginning has not been monopoly. We are not saying Muslim should buy all posts, no. but we were saying Muslims are new. Allow democracy to prevail. If democracy is full of number, is to be determined by simple majority, and the Muslim that majority, then let let the people and let the candidate buy the position without any will of their own, and that has happened. Of course, it was. Um, but has won, and uh, the noise was quite unnecessary. Now we come to down to other cities, and we are going to what the Muslim actually represent in this country. What is the character of the Muslim? What is the Muslim character? Okay, P Professor. Is our Pro Professor, I have a, I have a question. Professor, we will make Professor Ishak, I'm, I'm going to have to 
jump in here because I can barely hear what you're saying, but I'm, I'm going to try again here. Um, Governor uh, Abdulaziz Yari, who is obviously also running um, for that position, has had a few words about the uh, unfortunate zoning process in the National Assembly. We're going to take a listen and hopefully we can fix your audio so I can hear what you have to say. Let's take a listen. My party. But I know, I know they're in the lectures. So. What, the, what the lawyer says? The lawyer says no one has the constitutional power or it's a kind of exclusive power to me and my colleagues to decide on our leaders. Are there any wrong when I said I want them to choose me? I don't see it wrong because I'm doing the exercise, I'm exercising the constitutional responsibility. So I'm not kicking anything against my party or against anyone. But I'm saying that I'm trying to get the indulgence of my colleagues to trust me and hire me. And the same time I did do wrong somewhere, they fire me. So the hiring and firing is the responsibility of, exclusive responsibility of members of the National Assembly. I kick against my party. But I know, I know that. It's still Plus Politics, and we're still being joined by Professor Ishaka Kintala, uh, who is the director for MURIC. Now, um, Professor, before we went on that quick break, uh, we're still talking about the issue of zoning. Now that you are saying that you'd prefer for a, um, a non-Muslim, a Christian from the South, uh, to occupy that position. That means that we're now bringing religious sentiments into something that should be mostly about merit or capability to run for a particular office. Again, um, former Governor Yari, who's also in the running for this, who obviously is a Muslim, has said that this, is, this has nothing to do with the party or picking persons, that he feels that um, the responsibility should be given to him by members of the Senate only by their votes, as opposed to what you're calling for. Is that not also one way or the other, bringing issues of religious sentiment into the whole game? I think Nigeria is face reality. We will never be able to drive religion out of our thinking. Whether we are doing... What, whatever we are doing, religion is about God. Religion is about human creation, the creation of all human beings. So we can't get it out of our system. Even if we prepare it to be uh, uh, non transmitter So people say, we don't want to bring religion into this. We don't want to bring religion into that. But every Sunday, every Friday, we all rush to the people and to the mosque. So it is part of our system. It is it is here, the U.S. is in Britain, millions than well. So I, uh, our statement has not populated. It doesn't decide to, to criticize anyone or to protect any governor or anybody that spoke about it. We just spoke our mind. And we don't want to relate it to any government now or any politician. It is just the bare truth. Muslims are in the majority that is right there. Next, we will also confront that role in the country. We are prepared to share two positions before Muslims. It will not be all Muslims. It's not, it's, it's all jobs in the country. All roads, what we use? The electricity we consume. The transport uh, system that we use. That is none of them that belong to only Christians or to Muslims alone. Okay. So, when we take the faith, we don't have any, any pagan for Muslims, another pagan for Christians. The poverty situation in the country, whereby the ethnic Nigerians depend on less than two per day, affects both. The Naira Crown, when the Messiah um, is um, trained their system, it didn't affect people alone. It didn't affect people alone. It affected all of us. So I, I, when COVID 19 came, COVID 19 did not distinguish between the Muslim and the Christian. Hmm. 
So what we have seen, let's be fair to all. The Muslims want me, if it is their moving them. The Christians have thought that if it is their sister, if it is their real life, they can have it. So long as it doesn't affect any other uh, group. Hmm. Let me ask. Let me, ask, I, I, let me, let me let come in. Let me come in. Way. Let the Christians have their way. Okay. Let me, mean, let me come in there, Professor. Yeah. Professor, you are one of those people who supported the Tinubu Shatima t ticket. Where was the fair play there? Come again. You supported the Muslim Muslim ticket of the APC, which we now have as the president and vice president elect. Yeah. Where yeah. was yeah. the I place do. of fairness to all in all of that? Because I remember you were on this station making that argument, but now. You're pushing for the Christians uh, to be given an opportunity. Um, where was this sentiment at the time when the APC was fielding that ticket? How would how would you how would you, how would you expect me to know? We supported Muslim Muslim ticket because the presidential candidate uh, of the APC decided to pick up a date that will give him the best opportunity. The best number of supporters and voting. That is strategy, not sentiment, not religion. He was not thinking of picking a Muslim. He was not thinking of picking a Christian. You can't pick somebody who will give him the vote. He got it. It is the other side, people like you, who are thinking, oh, he is not the Muslim. Now he has picked the Muslim. It's a Muslim doctor in the hospital. So why now? Take care of, you know, of this medication to, to patients in the world. Does he ask them whether they are Muslim or people in the world? Why why not? Why giving them a national sign to them the blood? And why should anybody go to the ground to accuse that medical doctor? Of religious sentiment. Uh, if by accident one of the patients died, and you now come to play more, so we didn't give him enough drugs because it existed. And that was why he died. Where we are going in the sanity country, our sentiment is to spread. I hope you will not go that distance. Hmm. Provocative. For the patient, congestions, ridiculous speculations, uh, we do not have this. Let us think. Let us, let us, let us also remember that even as journalists, whatever profession we belong to, we are still Nigerians. We are Nigerians. So yeah, yeah, and Professor, that's that's the question that I'm still asking. I don't think that you get me. If we see ourselves as Nigerians first, as opposed to Christian or Muslim, and see competence, why should we even be having this conversation in the first place? Why is it that That's when it comes right. to issues of leadership, we begin to bring in religious sentiments and ethnic sentiments? Why can't it be about people who are able to do the job as opposed to what God they worship? Because this is the, this is the position that you brought into this conversation. Exactly what I was saying. We don't need to bring religion into the conversation. But you have brought it. it. The, governor, the governor of a state will look for people if he if he has a good intention of running a good government. He will look for people. He will not be looking for traditionalists or Muslims or Christians. He will assemble his team. Well, it's uncomfortable. Although, uh, even at, at, uh, at the back of his mind, he will know that somehow, after assembling his team, he will he will know uh, where he will be my in my in my in my in my in my in my That is because of the character of our country, Nigeria. Okay. We are multi and we are multi-tribal. 
We have more than three different different types in Nigeria alone. And so definitely each group, each of its, its own interest. First and foremost, the most important thing. So as far as we are concerned, we do not need a set of media force. It should be competent, it should be integrity, and that and so that is uh, and good governance. Okay. It, talking about good governance here, and of course, uh, I want to bring the APC, which is the ruling party on the floor of the National Assembly here. Um, the APC had put out a statement earlier on um, talking about who they preferred as their candidates for the positions of the Speaker of the House, uh, National Assembly and the Deputy Speaker, the Senate President and the Deputy Senate President. Um, sh there are many who have also kicked against, you know, the party, making known who their preferred candidate is, as opposed to allowing for internal democracy to happen in the Senate and, of course, the House of Representatives. What are your thoughts on the party's position? Well, I am neither OPC nor PDP. And so I will not be judgmental. I, and I will, I will not be the analytical. Concerning the question of the OPC, that question belongs to, to, to others. I am a religious leader, and I don't belong to any So I am not judging on the, the, the actions or decisions of the APC. It is not nothing to do with religious politics. Because politics is understood by politicians. It is not understood by, uh, by laymen like us. There are a lot of factors that leads to decisions in politics. Unlike in religion, where there is a mad line which we must follow. In politics, there are no mad lines. The enemy today will be the friend tomorrow. So, but uh, on the outside, just bring someone like me in, and you want me to judge politicians concerning their political decision, you have not been to me. I don't want to fall into any peace for now. Okay, because you're a religious leader. <laughs> as a religious leader, a professor of a you know a great <laughs> reputation, let's talk about the personalities of these people who. Um, have been put out by the party again. Uh, let's talk about the likes of former governor Godswill Akwabiu and his deputy, the man that the party has picked, or uh, Mr. Abbas on on the House of Reps on the floor of the House of Representatives, who, who's from the South South here. Um, South, Southwest, I beg your pardon. Let's look at their personality because you talked about competence and you talked about the ability to do the job. Do these men reflect, you know, people who are competent enough to lead this country? Don't forget that whatever happens after May 29 all rests on the shoulders of these lawmakers and it's either we're going forward or we're retrogressing. What are your thoughts? Uh, um, again, let me be clear. I have never been a senator, neither have I been a public rep. And so the oppression in there, in the red chamber of the green chamber, are unknown to me. And if I'm, I'm, if I'm pushed in there now to join them on 29, 29 May, I will just be a citizen. Unable to contribute because I am not used to put them. So I thought there's somebody who has been forcing any politician because I'm not a politician. Professor, I believe that you're being—I I, I believe that you're being—I I, I believe you're being economical with the truth, or you're, you're just playing diversionary tactics here. You are the one who's speaking about who should be picked, uh, what religion should be picked, um, or should be considered 
um, for these positions, but yet you would rather not speak on the competence of the people I who have been put forward. I refuse to speak about the personality. But, but, but the people but who I, you are advocating for are also persons, whoever they pick, whether that person is Christian, yeah, uh, yeah, from the South yeah, or the West, yeah, they're human yeah. beings. Should, know, should their know. capability to deliver in those places that they're picked for not be of concern to you? No matter how you drive me, just trust me to be protected or to change personality. I'm not somebody that is studying in different politicians. I have, have oh, oh, my view is about the system to be listening to them today. This can be the controversy that Britain has discussed. And we are, we are coming around to so say, oh, this is the one for the first constituency we want Nigeria to speak from the, from the small part. So you're interested in the zoning of political offices, but you're not interested in the persons who these places or these positions are, are zoned to. You're not bothered about that. You're most interested in the zoning of the offices, but not interested in the persons who hold these offices. If you're if you're in a bill, you have that and confrontational with the before. I am telling you, don't forget a or I don't know them. What I know is that a to be president from the South South. Okay. All Isn't right. that clear enough? Why would you drag me into the uh, individual personalities? I don't hate any of them. And I don't love any of them. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, Professor Ishaka Kintala. You're the director of MIRIC. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for speaking with us. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be discussing the ongoing five day warning strike by the National Association of Resident Doctors and the position of federal government on this strike. Stay with us. <laughs>